Well, hey, good morning. Um, I'm Goldcrest, and this is Gorn, and we're going to have a little bit of a different conversation with ALU this morning. What we really just want to talk about it, and one of the long-term goals for ALU has been making sure that really we just set an example for others to follow. We really never intended ALU to be the, the sole source for these kinds of opportunities or discussions, but really just really demonstrate what the realm of possible looked like and trying to spread the word out. So the goal of this morning is just to have an open conversation between the two of us and some of the other team that, that's hard at work right now and just see what's on your mind and what we can do to help you succeed in running your own panels. And then hopefully what we plan to, to, uh, to model after in the long term is kind of like a TEDx event where we'll be able to host those same activities that you've done in your own lands and your own kingdoms through the, uh, Facebook, the Facebook and the YouTube channel that we've got for Ingrid Leadership University and really blow this thing up across the game. So that's our goal here, and we'll go through a little bit. But uh, what I'll do is actually start similar to, to what we normally do and ask Goran just to give a little bit of, tell a little bit about himself and, and how he became involved with ALU. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where the conversation goes from there. So, Goran? Uh, hi, I'm Goran. Um, I'm from Northreach up in Alaska. Um, I've been playing Amp Guard for, oh, crap, 17 years now, uh, a little more than that. And um, I started getting involved with ALU because Goldcrest made me. Um, no, honestly, because uh, the leadership aspect of AmpGuard is a, a, a passion project of mine, just in general. Um, I love the organizational structure of what we have and uh, the transformative like abilities that we have just as general members to shape and, and direct the organization and to make it better for everybody that's in it. And this is one of the uh, most innovative tools that AmpGuard's come up with since I joined to do that. And so it's a pretty neat, uh, neat opportunity to be involved in. And, and so like, like Goldcrest was just saying, um, you know, this is, this is a tool that's open to anybody, anywhere to do. I mean, you don't have to be Goldcrest to sit in front of a camera and talk about how you run your, your parks or how you run an event or how you recruit newbies or anything um, that would be benefit to other members. So, so this is an opportunity for us to remind you guys that you don't have to be in charge to be in charge. No, I think that's a good point, though. I'll have a conversation sometimes, and when we get down the map, but what Gordon was talking about, if you realize I'm really rarely in front of the, the, the camera, I ask a lot of questions, and a lot of those questions are generated by either conversations I have on the side, or sometimes I'm trying to lead them down a path to, to hit one of the foot stomps or conversation points that, that, that me and the team on the panel have already had. So really, if you don't need to have a lot of experience as a leader to really excel as a, even a, a moderator or um, somebody interested because your job is to ask questions of people that you know that have experience. So it's a great way to, to pull together people that you know have uh, experience and are excited to share that experience with others. And then you just get to kind of hit them with questions that are on your mind. So it's kind of a, a great opportunity there. Um, a little bit about how ALU is structured just so you know the background. Uh, we actually have, have a, a pretty robust team of, of leadership that spans a number of kingdoms and, and whatnot, and we'll get together about once a month over the uh, uh, Facebook, I think is the, the forum right now, but we'll get together over Facebook chats and just have a conversation, kind of free form, okay, where have we been up to? Where are we trying to go with it? Things like that, and keep going from there. Um, as you can tell, I'm horrible about sticking to an outline. But uh, so history of ALU, for those that aren't familiar with actually, uh, um, started in a conversation that I was having on the side with Brennan and we started talking about how would we take a, a similar approach and really asked what would it look like if we took a similar approach to what uh, FWAC has done with SKBC and try to incorporate that model into leadership. If you notice the the Sword Knight and Warlord culture has a great one on education and trying to bolster the, the next generation and, and, and in turn making better making themselves better and so how would we take that and apply that to really an, the undiscovered realm, if you will, um, of leadership and service. And so that's kind of where ALU started from because, okay, so what would that look like? And, and then I think timing was about right that I was attending a few conventions where there's some panels and, and slowly but surely, uh, I pulled together my resources, which is how ALU succeeds and anything succeeds. I pulled together my resources, the team from Northreach, Sir Gorn, my amazing wife, Glenolf and his experience, uh, Sarah Budai, tie-dye, and we built an amazing team to get this going, and we're like, okay, we'll try it out the first clan. And when we did it last year, the second time, and then we started filling in other events that we were participating in, and slowly but surely it grew into something a little bit Has more. Has it only been three years? Yeah. 
It's interesting you say only. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, it just it feels like there's been a lot more that's been done. We've packed a lot in there in three years. There has. I think we've got now, uh, if we haven't already, I think we'll be hitting our 50th offering. Um, a ridiculous number of hours of viewed and things like that. We've opened up to the Leaders or Readers program where, uh, except for the last couple of weeks, every Wednesday we find an online uh, uh, article or something like that and try and put an AMP card spin on it because really leadership isn't an AMP card only thing, right? Really, leadership is being studied uh, in depth for generations and generations and generations on the outside world. So trying to bring that and adopt that into AMP card makes a lot of sense, right? So yeah. we started doing that and then the weekly TEDx offerings whenever we're trying to fill the gap in between events. So it's, we've got a lot to offer out there. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, and it's important too because, um, you know, like Goldcrest was just saying with the parallels with the, the fighting culture, um, you know, anybody that's been an amp guard for any length of time, uh, they see what you would consider problems, challenges, hurdles, you know, things that parks and groups run into that either cause them to stagnate, to backpedal, to, I don't know, to just full on dumpster fire, right? And the vast majority of the time when we have the chance to reflect back on what happened, it's generally poor leadership. And I've never met in all of my time in Amp Guard or even in, in outside of Amp Guard, a poor leader that was a poor leader by choice. It's almost always because they just don't have the skill set. No one's showed them the right way to do it. And, um, you know, so as Goldcrest and I talked about the ALU as a project, um, it became really apparent that AmpGuard doesn't do a great job of training its employees. We don't pay them anything, but they're still basically our employees. And we put them in management positions without any real training. We tell them to figure it out on their own, right? Squire yourself to a crown night, figure it out. Um, and so this is, this is a really good opportunity in modeling culture to start training our managers so that they can stop lighting dumpster fires. So before we move on to like determining venue and things like that, are there any questions? Unlike normally, this is just a, hey, raise your hand and let's just open it up. Typically we'll do the cards and stuff like that. But for this one, um, since there's really no moderator, we probably any just initial questions? We probably have a seat and ask their questions. Oh, that's true. Yeah, if you'd like to come over there, that'd be even better. No questions? Ram, could you have a question? No. Oh, you sure? <laughs> you, you shifted your weight. You looked forward. No? It's like the it's reverse like, It's like panel. an auction, right? Oh, you bought it. Nice. Okay. So determining venue, sometimes it's just, hey, who's going to this event, right? I, I mean, it is, it's, it really starts off with that, okay. So is there an opportunity for us to hold an ALU event? Um, we've done them at a number of the events out in Crystal Groves, obviously third time here out at Gathering of the Clans, um, known World War, keep. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, like we've done ALU stuff in a garage. You know, I mean, yeah. the venue is anywhere your leaders are sit down with them and you can talk quietly for a few minutes, either with an audience or just on camera. I mean, for those of you guys that are watching at home, we're running this entire event off of iPods. So you don't need a ton of technological, you know, experience or equipment to do it. Um, I think the important thing is probably that you just do it. You bet. So, I mean, if you have an event in your, in your kingdom or area or whatever, that's a really good opportunity to get all of those leaders in one place, you know, get that talent and, and, coerce them into sitting down and talking to you about it. Um, but, but if you have, you know, a great leader at your park and they've got an afternoon on a Sunday to sit outside or in their garage or whatever, um, interview them. So anywhere, really any time that works for, for having the conversation, right? Um, so Gordon, you want to share a little bit about how we come up with exactly what our panels are going to be? <laughs> It's a highly technical process. It really is. We just sit down and say, what do we want to do for panels? Um, you know, and we brainstorm. I mean, really, because if a lot of times, let me back up a little bit. One of the great things about ALU as a concept is, is like Goldcrest just said a second ago, it, it really is at its heart a conversation, right? And conversations have a way of bringing up ideas and, and perspectives that if you just tried to think about it on the spot, you, you may not be able to pull up. So... Um, so when we start brainstorming these ideas, we just build it. We just play off of each other. It's a big sounding board. I'll, I'll say like, well, this is a cool idea. And someone will say, oh, that's really cool, but that leads into this. And then we're like, oh, oh my God, no one's ever talked about that. We need to do that. Um, but we also pay attention to what's going on in the AmpGuard community. And we say like, you know what? Maybe we should do a panel on bannings. That's been a pretty hot topic lately. AmpGuard, as a general, like they're fixated on this. Um, 
And the great thing is, is when the community is focused on something, that's the best time to talk about it because you have a lot of attention. A lot of people are going to pay attention to it, and they're going to there's value there. They're they're going to absorb that information more readily than if it's something they didn't care about it at that moment. So capitalizing on interest is important, right? Um, and really just getting a group of people together to just talk about it and bounce those ideas around, you can put together a list pretty fast. One of the things too, though, like he was talking about were the bannings and as we brainstorm is we'll kind of build buckets on the side, mm -hmm. you know? So like you mentioned bannings, well, as the brainstorm, okay, we want to talk about bannings. We want to talk about nurturing future leaders. We want to talk about these other things, right? And we knew that clan was coming up. So you'll know uh, later today, we have a conversation about circle of monarchs and, and kingdom level monarchs. Well, they're going to get cornered and we're going to talk about when is it time to ban? When is it time to do something else? Right? Because we've got them, but an hour or so just talking about bannings um, could get a little bit rough to pay attention to. Right? So we just try and put those in buckets and we figure out how best based off of who's going to be in the venue, who's available to participate. So then we look at it and then that'll sort of decide what the actual the panel is, if you will. All knowing well in advance that that's really what we're going to get get into the meat of. So, like I said, Circle of Monarchs today, or the Kingdom of uh, Monarchs, we're going to cover all kinds of things on why they chose to run, what are some of their roles and responsibilities, how does it differ, and we're going to start talking about those exciting topics hot on Facebook right now, such as bannings and, and a couple other hot topics out there. So you'll see that, and then that just grows. Uh, AOU typical panel shoots for about 45 minutes, just because it's a little bit easier for uh, for scheduling. We found that based off our viewership, YouTube does a great job on providing some analytics. Uh, viewerships only last about 12 to 15 minutes with they, before they move on to something else on average. So that's usually what we try to keep our topics to before we move on to the next group of questions, things like that. Now, like anything, we're kind of busy on doing the, the ALU basic offerings, but we got some, real, uh, some great dreams and some great plans on some future offerings. And so that'll also feed into like that 12, 15 minute kind of concept. So it's just some, some, some key things to think about. Jay, you mentioned, or Gorn, you mentioned that you're running everything, or this year we're running everything off of the iPods. Uh, you want to share a little bit about the, the equipment that we're using today? Sure. Um, so uh, I was playing around with some stuff. We like to videotape our, our jugging matches and, and battle games and things like that. Um, so I found an app online. Uh, There's several apps like this, but it's called Multicam. It's like five bucks. And it lets you, uh, over a Wi-Fi network, sync up to four um, iDevices, Apple devices, which, uh, and then you can switch between those camera angles on the fly, um, which is really nice. It cuts down on post-production work. Um, you can also pipe in like graphics and things like that. Uh, they have a, a, a premium version for like 30 bucks that'll let you live stream what you're doing, um, which eliminates post-production, which is great. Uh, I'll tell you right now that if you're gonna do any project with video, unless you don't have a life, you want to limit your post-production or your stuff will just sit on a hard drive forever until you get around to it. I, I know for me, I've probably got hundreds of hours of video. I will probably never actually get out there because I just don't have time to sit at post-production. That takes a lot of time. So anything you need to cut that down is good. Um, we've got some directional mics. They're not all on frame, I don't think, but uh, you can get some boom mics that are nice for interviews. Uh, they're pretty cheap, 30 to 60 bucks. Um, we're running a bunch of them here, but really, if you have one iPhone and one boom mic, um, you can do a really, really professional looking uh, interview, but even the onboard camera is good enough, you know, if you've got a quiet room and, and not a lot of distraction. Um, so you can run the gamut from having just one iPhone on a tripod, always use a tripod, um, to having multiple camera angles, multiple microphones, um, all of that. So, uh, or if you want to get really fancy and spend a lot of money on, you know, um, big cameras and things like that, lights and stuff you can go nuts but the nice thing about this process is that it's accessible to anybody with a phone pretty much which is should be just about everybody so um yeah no and i think we've got some some specific gear and things like that, that you've gotten because of the phoenix league efforts up in north reach and then we'd originally started with a couple really handheld cameras and then uh, this tascom uh, recording device uh, kind of set us up for success as we started moving along but yeah really the nice thing about iPhones and really cell phones in general is your support team that's helping you put this together, you could usually probably pull out all the recording equipment out of their pocket and with some extension cords put together a pretty good process. <laughs> and then like anything in AmpGuard, it just slowly but surely grows, right? So we're, um, 
we try to, to put on a pretty, pretty nice looking production, but really, you know, behind us, the vinyl banners can be found pretty affordable. Again, the drop in front, um, everything can be found online. And so it was surely built if you want to go that route, but it could be just a simple interview, right? I mean, that's kind of invaluable also and something we really haven't branched too far into. We've been looking to, be. oh but yeah, just some sit down one-on-ones I think are going to be huge. Quirk. If you would. Either one. You're good. Thank you. So the question that I have for you is, let's say you got the bank and you decided that you actually want to have an ARM account pulled. Can you walk us through kind of what preparation steps you would actually want to take, time frames out, how long you want to start prepping, that sort of thing, to actually put something on of this setup? Um, what sure. would be the actual steps you would take? How would you want to go about that whole process? Okay. So in theory, we usually start about a month out after we've already decided the, the, what we're going to do. So I'd probably say two months out is an ideal situation where we're like, okay, for real, clan's coming up. <laughs> we've already committed to doing a full day of panels. We need to get serious about this. And we have some great conversations about brainstorming and what we're going to talk about, things like that. If it was my first event and I wanted to, okay, I'm going to copy the ALU model 100%. Two months would probably be about the best time frame because also that would allow you to do, if you wanted to do the banners and things like that, enough time to not have to pay for extra shipping and things like that. We'll be including a number of resources in the, uh, on the page on YouTube with talks about the, the multicam software, the links to where we get our banners from and things like that. But so about the two month mark, we're starting to talk infrastructure, right? So we make sure that we've got these kinds of items. I would also reach out to, to us on the ALU team because we've actually got a number of write-ups that uh, we, can, we can hand to you everything from the photo re uh, release to how we actually, where we get our banners from, the, the works, kind of a, almost a packet just we could hand you. But about two months out, we've started to talk about that. Um, that would also give you enough time to order the equipment. So Gorn, if you want to share where you got your equipment from. Uh, Amazon. I live in Alaska, so Amazon Prime is what I live off of. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, you can get tripods for 20 bucks, you know, a good, decent ones. You can get crappy ones for a lot less than that. Um, I ordered iPods directly from Apple or refurbished ones. They were, I think, 160 bucks each, which is pretty cheap. Um, and uh, I got a, a sound mixer off of Amazon as well that came from China. It's battery powered. It's got a four, you know, four inputs, so I can run four mics off of it, um, and it works pretty good. So, um, so yes, yeah, so you, you want to decide on, um, you know, you obviously hopefully would know where you're going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. You've got your venue selected. Uh, and, and then you got to figure out what the format's going to be. So is it going to be a big giant panel like this where you might need multiple cameras or is it going to be something with just two people in front of one camera? You need to settle on what your format's going to be so that you know what equipment to get um, and then get place orders and get all of that together. Uh, you can usually cobble together things like tripods. You don't need a pretty hefty one to hold an iPod. Um, you know, uh, and the little little cell phone attachments that come usually come with selfie sticks, which you can pick up for five bucks. Um, work really great for holding those on there. And uh, so once you've got that selected, um, you can kind of move on to things like what are we going to talk about? Sure. So once we're talking about what are we going to talk about, one of the things we start trying to refine is who's available to talk about things, right? Because it's one thing if we're going to talk about um, bannings, right? But then you start talk, looking at your venue and it's a bunch of folks who have never really participated in banning. Maybe you don't have a lot of experienced leadership that has been part of the conversation. So maybe that's not the right venue, right? So you look at really who you've got that's going to be available at the venue and really help that refine. Like Goran said, when we start doing our brainstorming, we've got a list on our ALU page that's probably 40 or 50 topics long. And we'll kind of look at that and say, okay, we're going to clan. So we map out who's available and things like that, and we start throwing it out there. One of the things that, uh, that's worked for me is I'll find out like who that, that, that one or two people that I'm really dead set on, like those are the two folks that I'll build the panel off of, and I'll throw it out to them because they usually know who else, who they've had these similar conversations with, um, some pros, some against, but you get the one or the two folks, and then you help refine the team around that to build up to the four or five. Because again, um, 
leaders talk about leadership an awful lot, just like fighters or artisans talk about it. So who are they having that really insightful conversation with? Um, because they want to share that. So we help build that team that way. And then we start reaching out to say, hey, are you going to the event? Just to refine. And then are you willing to be on camera and be part of it? Okay, and then we start getting that kind of feedback out. And, and ideally, that puts us about a month out. Mm -hmm. About a month out. Um, sometimes life gets in the way and we do a little bit more short notice like we have for this clan. But, uh, but about a month out, if you can start locking things in as far as who's going to be on the panel, you've ordered the supplies and you've got that out. Um, then you start looking kind of to refine your own team because you know who's got the energy, but who's got the skill sets and the talent. And if you've ever watched us set up, um, mine is not all the tech. We have uh, Gorin here, rocks the tech. Glenelf has a, a very extensive uh, experience and, and education and interest if you will, and all the tech stuff. So we get those two working that kind of deal. I reach out on the who I've had leadership conversations or who I've always wanted to talk to kind of interview. And we just kind of put together our own support team. Again, based off of who's got the experience, who's got the interest, who's going to the event. So we've got our equipment on order or here. We've got our people coming in day of, going with some of the stuff that, that we were doing last couple of days and today. Oh, man, you just overestimate the amount of time you'll need to set up. <laughs> like... Do it the day before if you can get away with it. Um, but if you if you have you know your panel starting at noon, give yourself two or three hours. I mean, be set up an hour before you need to. Um, there's nothing that sort of undermines the credibility of an, you know any activity you're doing other than being late and unprepared, right? If you want to basically get a bunch of people together and say we want to show you how leadership works, and then you can't even be on time, that is it hurts your credibility. So it also takes the stress level way up. The last thing you want to do is be running around full of anxiety, trying to get the stuff set up. So make it easy on yourself. Give yourself tons of time. And have a backup plan for just about everything. Backup phone, backup power, you know, backup whatever you need um, so that things can fail and it doesn't hurt. I agree. Um, it's kind of silly to try and have a, a discussion about leadership and the importance of it and then kind of demonstrate lack of. All right, so, so we want to make sure we're good on that. Cord, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Good enough? Okay, thank you. Great question. So you can just chat into the mics there. One of the things, while well, she's getting ready for a question, I can't emphasize this enough. We always have photo and release forms. Can't encourage that enough. You don't always know the rules on where you're taping and things like that. So making sure that you just got documented proof that the individual, and we're happy to share the one that we've got that we also found online, but uh, um, can't emphasize enough to have plenty of this stuff as part of your normal kit because you don't know who's going to come online. You don't know who's going to join in the day of and making sure that people sign them just before every time that you film. Uh, yeah. ALU does not generate any funds at all. Um, you can let it get expensive or you can let it be inexpensive. It's entirely up to you. But, but as, as AmpGuard is learning, the last thing we want to deal with is a bunch of petty legal issues. So save yourself the trouble. <laughs> Your question. Back on the topic of failure, um, is there some kind of um, standard that you have to follow Sure. I mean, that's, that's a, a fantastic thing. And that could be a panel topic that you could totally do. Um, if you're asking, like, how do you deal with failure in that situation, uh, the, the, best, the best defense, and that is a good offense, I mean, be really prepared so that, and have redundant plans so that if something fails, you already know what you're going to do. Um, most people struggle in the, in the arena of failure because they don't know what to do next. Their plan's been disrupted, and now they're, you know, they, they're adrift. They don't, know what, they don't have direction. So if you kind of have some redundant things going on in your head, when you encounter that obstacle, you already have mapped out what you're going to do. So there's no stress. You just take a left turn instead of a right. You know where you're going. Well, I meant more to show the process that you do to establish the backup. Oh, okay. Um, I'll tell you, there's actually a conversation yesterday, so your timing is great. So there was a conversation yesterday um, with Brennan, 
that talked about the value of reinforcing that, hey, innovation is often based off of the trials and tribulations, right? You keep, you, you try new things and sometimes you stumble, you skin your knees, sometimes you fail miserably, but you're, you continue to push those boundaries. And we haven't really ex- had an entire panel on it. We've, we've kind of danced around it during some panels, but it's definitely going to be a future offering where we just talk about kind of reminding folks it's okay to fail. Right? We forget that and we think, oh my gosh, it's miserable and, and I'm doomed and I'll never do anything again. Or sometimes we give up on somebody and say, well, you're never allowed to run a panel again because you failed miserably. <laughs> right? um, but really, that's where the best lessons get learned. And we forget that sometimes, right? especially if we start focusing only on the positive bit, the positive stuff that can come from it. So that's a great question and not something we've explored as an entire panel, but uh, I think it's about time. So thank you for that. Question? So it's on a similar topic. I'm actually wondering what you've experienced in your three years of putting on panels. What are specific pitfalls that, and mess ups and mistakes that you've managed to develop plans that work on? What, what are the common how much How much time do we have? I know. <laughs> uh, that'll be the after show uh, for um, over dinner. Have backup panelists. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that's in your control, right? Like having equipment, having backup equipment, being on time. Uh, a lot of stuff that's outside of your control, whether or not panelists show up, right? You can't control other people. Um, weather. Weather, <laughs> you know. There, so have, have some ideas and plans on how you will handle the things that are outside of your control. Um, what are, I mean, what are some of the things that happen? Like rain here sucks on this, uh, you know, bare roof. Right. <laughs> I, I think, too, is know what your expectations are so that you can properly define like what failure is, right? So really the online offerings are great, but they were never really intended to be the real product. This is just a, hey, if we're going to do it, then we should record it, right? Um, these kind of conversations and this dialogue was the goal. So even if all, the, all this failed and we had to go sit outside underneath a, a shade tree and we just had a great hour or two conversation about leadership, to me, AOU succeeded because that's the goal, right? To be a leadership resource for players by players. So as long as we're continuing the conversation, like that's a success. Everything else above that is extra credit. And I think that's the important thing is really keeping focus on what you wanted. If we sat there and we said, well, anything less than 50 people in the room, um, 2,000 hours viewed of every, I mean, that's, that's nice but that's just a bar too far. So being realistic on what the expectations are is the first goal and just knowing that everything else builds on it and maybe trying not to duplicate this and invest the probably thousand dollars that, that we've got in the setup isn't the best way to go. Maybe it starts with an iPhone or maybe it just sits down with your next event. You get two or three folks up there and you have conversation and then somebody's going to pull out a phone and record it, mm-hmm. right? They'll ask you probably the week before, are you recording? If not, can I record it? Can it be on Facebook live? And then just let that grow. So if you kind of make sure that, that your goal is a good one, then your or, or is an accessible one, an obtainable one, right? Smart goals. Then, and let it grow from there, then you're going to succeed a little bit more often because all your challenges, because this is the challenging part. So if you leave the challenging part as the extra credit, even better. And then it builds on it. So, um, but yeah, everything for this, everything can go wrong your panelists can decide that they can't make it because you can't control whether even flying in, you can't control all those things. So there's been many a day where some of the volunteers are out there saying, Hey, so-and-so can't make it. Can you sit in? Or are you interested? Or, but it's kind of like anything else you throw it out there. Hey, we're looking for some folls with this experience. Are you willing to come talk to us? Amp carters want to share that experience and that opportunity. Sometimes the challenge is saying, no, we can't have a panel of 50 people with only two members in the audience. Right? There's a lot of experience out there. So I know I get off track, but that's usually why I sit on the other side of the camera. <laughs> but, uh, no, but he's right. I mean, remembering the core of what it is you're there to do, what is the basic thing, um, helps. Because then you're like, oh, well, the cameras are down, but there's still 50 people here that want to hear what we have to say. So that's what we're here for, right? Um, we had that conversation this morning. Yeah. Okay, no matter what. Because we've got redundant. We've got a couple extra cameras. The old kit is still here um, while we test out the new kit. So we had that, right? Um, we struggled water hammer helped us get Wi-Fi in the room so we could get these cameras last minute kind of deal but in the end we're like hey we've always wanted to go podcast so if we just do the the audio recording that's good enough right because it's better than what we currently have 
And again, this being our goal. And then if we just did that, it's still a success. Just yeah. maybe not the A plus that we wanted to deliver. Any other questions or concerns? What's on your mind? What are some panels that you would like to have while Water Hammer comes up to ask his question? Is there a other panel that's on your mind? Crickets? Sir? So just thinking about another panel, um, for our world, our, our next thing will be photoplastic. And I was thinking a good panel would be just bringing the, the leadership of the Terra Monarchs and the provincial lands, the Monarchs of the Kingdom, and get them up there for just an open session. Have you ever done an unorganized ALU where you just put the most experienced people up front and get the conversation started and see if you can capture gold out of that? Another great question. Yeah, so we tried that out the other day. Um, last week at Crystal Grove's event, there was, well, there was a dialogue about a month ago at No More War where just a random conversation about women in AMCAR spurred up. And it was very insightful and very, uh, I really appreciate it and I learned a lot from it. So we tried to duplicate that, both the, the setup kind of deal where it was just an open chat and see how it goes. So we tried that last week at Crystal Grove's uh, Kingdom Summer mid -Rain for women of AMP Guard. And I think we had as many as eight at a time because it was kind of free flowing as they had other things to do. And it was just conversation. And uh, Manomi from Gargoyle's Gate was kind of our, our plant, if you will. Like she has some questions to spur up conversation and stuff like that, right? But uh, I think when we release that, hopefully next week, when we release that, you'll see it's, it's kind of similar to this where we just kind of chatted a little bit and, and random inputs from uh, the team. But so we're trying that chat approach out a little bit more just to be a little bit more relaxing because you never know, and again, I think you'll see when we release the women in AMCAR, <laughs> the, the fireside chat is kind of what we talk about. You're going to be surprised at where the conversation goes um, and, and enjoy it. So we're, we're trying out new stuff. We're also trying out the interviews mm -hmm. like we did with Northreach and the best practices um, and the uh, Book of War and the yeah, Advanced you. Players Guide. Mm -hmm. So we'll try some more of that kind of stuff out in the future maybe. Um, or maybe some of you with your phones will start doing some interviews that we'll be putting. Yeah. But on, on that topic, though, um, you have to be aware of the dangers in having a bunch of panelists who don't really have anything prepared other than to answer questions. And then a, a group of people who may not have questions to ask necessarily. You, you, you generally need something as a, again, a backup plan to kind of be able to throw out there to get that conversation going. So it's good to have some questions prepared or to have the panelists have maybe three bullet points of stuff that they want to talk about on the topic. Um, so even if you say like, I've got five minutes worth of material and we're gonna allow 30 minutes of open discussion, um, that five minutes of material will generate 30 minutes of discussion. But if you just say like, all right, these guys are here, what questions do you have? You may get crickets and that's something you gotta be prepared for. And that brings us back to the first question actually, because we never really sealed the deal on that one. So about a week to two weeks out, um, right now for ALU, I'll send out a sheet that, that gives that because we had after our first year um, and we started branching out, some of the panelists got really nervous, the newer panelists, because like, well, what are we going to talk about and what's the, you know, help me scope it and define the, the topic a little bit. So now we'll send out some brief little uh, uh, thought joggers, if you will, just, hey, here's some of the questions or some of the scope and just try and help them get their mind wrapped around where we're going to go. I'll be honest with you, I think there's usually six to ten initial questions to try and do that. We may get through two or three before the dialogue just kind of carries it, it its own way. That kind of helps with that also. It does. It's, it's also important not to try to force the conversation down a certain path. Like you can kind of nudge it along, but sometimes your panelists and your audience, they want to go in a completely different direction than what you had planned, and that's okay. I mean, again, it's all about the conversation, right? That's where there's value. So, um, so again, be prepared for that as well. And and try to be flexible and you'll have a good panel. And then during the panel, one of the things, and we're still trying to figure out the right vibe, but if you're familiar with the ALU panels, me or the, whoever the uh, moderator is at the time, ask all the questions because sometimes, um, God bless us, we want our issue addressed, right? And so the few times that we've tried to open it up and, and not counting this, but in the past where somebody would randomly ask a question, it's very specific to them right so it'd be like gorn what about this one time when you and i got into it and you know it's just it's kind of embarrassing and inappropriate so what we'll do is we funnel all the questions through the moderator the filter's important it, very important well, I, I, you'd be surprised <laughs> I, I i see well, goldcrest will ask a question and he'll ask the panel something like 
How do you handle a challenging monarch? Well, he's got a slip of paper in his hand that says, what do you do when your monarch's a d Right, like that's generally not what you wanna have a panel of, of you know, people trying to answer that from the audience. So having a moderator who can rephrase a question in a more productive way is pretty critical because um, it'll get a lot worse than that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they'll throw some, some of those slips of paper have been awesome to read. <laughs> We'd love to hear it. Lots of ways to do that. Um, I mean, the AmpGuard Facebook page is a really great way to hit. I mean, there's like thousands of people on that thing. It's kind of crazy how many people, and a lot of them, not even AmpGuarders. Like, can you give a little bit of context, though? I'm kind of like, is this if you're going to have a moderate, if you were going to hold an event, or is this like, hey, I've just got a question I want to get answered? Um, no, it's just like if I have a panel uh -huh. and then I put it on my Facebook page or put it on my Twitter or whatever, and it only gets like 10 views, I would sure. consider that a success because. 10 people saw it, but then that's only 10 people, and that's like, that's like my friend across the way or the person at my park, but that's not like all of everyone, and I want to reach out to multiple people because I know that there are plenty of people that have that spark that I do. I just have to reach out to them. So I sh I'll tell you, sometimes it can be tough. I'll always put out there, hey, we're going to do this event at – at Gathering of the Clans, and here's our schedule. If you know somebody that you'd love to have on this panel, make a recommendation, right? And I will hit usually the event page, and I'll hit AmpGuard, and I will usually get, uh, I think there were like three recommendations for the, the potential of 35 seats on the panels today. Um, so that's a good first start, but then I just start finding out who, who's going to the event, and I'll ask people, you know, like, hey, you know, I was thinking about holding a panel on this. Who do you think would be good for it? Right, random people who, if, if my attended audience is all of you, I'm going to try and track you down and I'm going to ask, hey, who would you like to see on the panel? Who, what do you want to talk about? Who do you want to see on the panel? And you kind of just, you, you grab any glimmer of hope because there's interest, but I mean, we're assaulted on Facebook with hundreds of things a day, right? So you just need to get somebody's attention for a couple moments and say, hey, we're going to do a panel. Are you interested or who would you like to see on it? And you, you get that info. So does that help a little bit? Yeah. Okay. And, and don't forget that you are, you're not the only one that's personally invested in that panel. Like all your panelists are, right? They wanted to sit up there and answer those questions. So like embrace the nature of social media. You know, if you've got 10 friends that weren't on the panel, but they're pretty reliable in checking out the stuff that you put on Facebook, just literally say, can you guys share this? And then tag all of the panelists. Say, hey, panelists, can you share this? That'll, that'll reach hundreds of people in a day because they'll all share it to their friends, you know, et cetera. And that, that social web, is, it's huge, and it, you can put information through it incredibly fast. So just ask, like literally ask people to help you, you know, make it more prolific. Just get it out there. Yeah. And let us know. We'll help you. Yeah, and, and especially your first will, panel. Yeah, Throw sure. it to us, and, and we'll, yeah, whatever we can do to help you host your panel. We're excited. But what, one of the things that I talk about in lots of leadership panels is, is a concept that is underrepresented in AmpGuard, or at least under-embraced, is the fact that you do not have to be an officer, a knight, a noble, a, a, anybody who's special or in charge or world-renowned to do something and just put it out there. Like, look, get on the AmpGuard page, be like, I did this thing. Everyone should look at this thing. I think it's really cool. Watch the thing. And just put it out there. You know, some people look at it, some people won't. That's cool. But if it's good, if it's got value, People will accept it as that, and, and you don't have to be anybody other than a general member of AmpGuard to do that. So empower yourself. Okay. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. So my question is kind of similar to the regard to the last question. If someone wants to run a panel and they want to get the help from AOU, are you able to approach the members of the AOU and see if no. they need maybe more <laughs> just to share it on the AOU site? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Please do. Right? We love the idea of watching other leadership panels. We know there's been a couple out there, but that is, that, that's what we wanted to do. Again, kind of back to where we started. ALU is about showing the possible and trying to encourage others to do the same, not to be the only kids on the block.
As much as we like doing all the work. You gotta go to the microphone first. I thought you were pointing somebody else. No, sir. I came in late, so if you've already addressed this, I apologize for asking the question. But uh, you talked about filtering things through the moderator with the mm -hmm. audience to ask, you know, questions that maybe aren't in the best format. On the flip side of that, when you have panelists, a lot of us are very strong personalities and we want to get information. We want to answer questions. And, and I know when we have five people sitting up here sometimes, it gets a little chaotic that everybody wants to jump in. And so I know that on panels in the past, I've seen you be like, okay, here's a question, and I'm going to start with this person. Like, I want this person to answer it first. How do you, or how would you recommend people who haven't run a panel before or who want to run panels moderate their panelists to make sure that everyone has a chance to give their input and it doesn't become more chaotic on that side of the table? Well, I, I think it's important, too, to realize that not everybody's going to be able to give their input, right? Because you get asked one question. If there's five of us up here, and it's just the moderator kind of throws it out there, and it'll happen to me today. I'll throw it out there, and, like, everybody's weight will shift. Like, I want to answer that one, or I've got input. And then it's like any other conversation. Okay, we'll start over here. And then that'll spur up another conversation. And this person's still trying to answer the first question. We've got this going. You just got to do your best to try and herd the cats, right? And make sure the conversation is productive. Um, I look for body language um, and just kind of keeping track of, okay, wow, I haven't heard from Gorn in a while. So, okay, hey, great input. Thanks, Forrest. And now our next question is for you, Gorn. Boom. You just kind of do your best. But if it gets away from you, like, that's okay, too. Right. And again, realize that sometimes the, the free range conversations may be even better than the questions you had. And that will happen sometimes, too. Like, oh, let's see how this is going. Sit back and relax because I don't have to be in charge of the conversation as long as it's getting good dialogue out there. Right. So I guess trying to to, to gauge it based off of yourself. And I will tell you, um, I never moderated a panel until I moderated a panel. You just got to give it a shot. Right. I mean, it's. There, there was no class on how to moderate panels. There was no anything. It's like, hey, I like having these conversations. I'm going to sit here with a microphone and let's have those same kind of conversations that we would have over a, a non-alcoholic beverage near a campfire. <laughs> right? no. um, another important thing that you can do to help prepare yourself for that, know your panelists. I mean, if you were a reporter interviewing somebody, you would spend time researching your, your subject, right? You would want to know what questions to ask. So even if it's something as simple as just checking out their wiki and their org pages, right? Know that this guy has been king of wetlands seven times. So that when, you know, running a kingdom and not, you know, and, and the question of burnout comes up, that might be a great person to direct that to. If you just have that little bit of information, you might know where to direct questions based on expertise and background, as well as, well, this guy isn't like, you know, jumping out and, and talking over everybody else, so he hasn't talked in a while. Let's include him in the conversation. So there's different ways you can, you can approach that. But, but knowing your panelists helps a lot. It really does. Did that answer your question for us? Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. So we got time for one last question before we start get, getting ready for the 10 o'clock panel. Anybody got anything that's still sitting out there? Well, I'll tell you, I sure appreciate the opportunity today. I'm kind of excited because hopefully we've got, let me do some quick math, about 12 of you in here. And if that spurred, spurred? spurred 12 more uh, panels or interviews throughout the next year, that would be quite an accomplishment for ALU. And I yeah, think we could say today won. Um, so thanks for spending some time with us. Um, hope you gained something from it. Going? Yeah, thoughts? no, I mean, thanks a lot. It's, it's really exciting to see people that are interested in doing this kind of stuff. Right, because lots of people are interested in leadership. Um, not a lot of folks are interested in finding out those other leaders and capturing that information and getting it out there. So it's a it's a neat project for people to be interested in. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to leave you with one one last thought that just kind of came up. We talked a lot about getting experienced leaders and stuff behind the panel. One of the best conversations I think that ALU has had it was with new players and just asking them questions, right? If you want to have a conversation about recruitment and retention, don't talk about the leaders who are already invested, who you know aren't going to go anywhere. Grab those brand new players and talk to them, right? So it doesn't just have to be experienced leadership. It can be people who have held successful ANS nights, right? Get them behind a panel and find out how they did it. Find out from your new players. Find out, ask them what they want to see. I mean, just find a target audience that you want to have a conversation with because there's value to getting that voice heard too. Mm -hmm. So please don't always just look for, oh, I don't have a, a, a seven time monarch of wetlands to come sit on a kingdom monarchy panel. Maybe you get some people who have never been in leadership and you have a conversation with them and say, hey, what are you looking for in your leadership? Mm -hmm. 
I think that would be a pretty phenomenal panel. And be creative about it, right? I mean, people don't want to see the same panels over and over and over again. So, Cool. Again, thanks, everybody, for your time. And hopefully you spend a little bit more time with us today. We've got a full schedule all the way until uh, 5 o'clock tonight. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, everybody.